Hey guys, Double Wide 6, and in today's video, we're going to be installing a mini split. This is my building. It's 24 by 24 foot. It's a detached garage. It's all insulated, and I'm going to put in an 1800 BTU mini split unit. Okay, guys, here's a look at the unit. It all came on a pallet right from Amazon. And uh, it was all shrink wrapped and sealed up real nice. There was absolutely no damage. Got delivered from FedEx. You get your indoor unit, you get your line set, which you see in the middle here, and on the right, you get your outdoor unit. Now, this unit I am planning on installing myself. I did a lot of research on different mini split units, and uh, I was pretty much between the Senville and the Pioneer. They're both very similar. And uh, you can get them for, you know, under $1,000 shipped, and uh, you can install it yourself. Now, as far as the warranty on this unit, you can uh, get an HVAC person to do your install for you, and that'll give you your warranty. However, I'm going to end up voiding my warranty because I'm going to install this myself and vacuum the lines myself. And uh, I'll show you in this video... Um, you know how to do some of the different steps but keep in mind I am not an HVAC uh, contractor I am just a homeowner installing this thing in my garage and this thing is a heat pump and it's also an air conditioner and uh, it should do a really good job in my space here because uh, this unit is good for up to about a thousand square foot here's a quick look at the outdoor unit Real nice finish on here. Uh, like I said, it shipped perfect. So in this video, we're basically going to get set up with our mini split unit. And what I'm doing is I'm hooking up the electrical. So the first thing I've done is uh, I've turned off all the power. And now I'm showing you that I have a double 20 amp breaker. And what we're going to do is we're going to hook up our 12-2 wire to the breaker. So the first step is to take the ground and just get it oriented properly in the box. And then to screw it off to the ground lug. Okay, now we're running our lines. So we have two wires in our 12-2. And both of these are going to get routed and hooked up to the breaker. With my lines routed, the first thing I'm going to do here is strip the ends. And you're going to notice that with the 12-2 wire, we have a white wire and a black wire. And what I'm doing is I'm taking that white wire and I'm coloring it in black on the end so that we know that this will be a live wire. So both these wires are going to tie on to the breaker. Here's a closer look. This is a 20 amp double pole breaker. This is going to give us our 240. And what I'm doing is just setting these lugs. So the white wire and the black wire, we're securing them both. Keep in mind, I am not a certified electrician. I'm just a homeowner doing a project. So make sure you follow all building codes and maybe even get an electrician to do this part of your job. This is a look at the cover of the box. You got to take out two knockouts to get it all set for the breakers. And I'm just labeling these right away so I know what they are. And then the cover actually sets on the wall and gets screwed in place. And at this point, I can turn back on the power in my shop. And uh, once the power's back on, I'll just keep off my air conditioning breaker so that there's not live power going to it while I'm working on the unit. On the outside of the building where the outdoor unit's going to be located, I have this AC disconnect box. This is required, it's a safety feature so that if anyone's working on the AC, they can they can pull this out and that'll turn off the power. Now I've briefly turned on the power. I just want to check that I'm getting my 240 out here. So the 
two wires coming in go to these two lugs and my meter showing 237 and I should have 120 across each side oops from uh, ground to each line lug yeah so I have my power and now I'll bring it in and just show you how this is wired up so the yellow wire coming in here that's my 12-2 and what that does is that goes up to these two center lugs those are my lines they provide the 240 volts the outside lugs they're going to send power through this whip these wires run down and the other end of this is going to hook on to the compressor and basically all you have to do is insert this thing here and that's going to when it's in the on position that's going to provide power to your air conditioner if you flip it over actually this way it's in the off position so we can put this in the off position until we're done with our install. There's also a plastic cover that goes on here. Just like that. So that's in the off position and now I'm gonna turn off the breaker. Here's a look at my slab. Uh, I poured this because uh, I didn't want to mount it on the house. Uh, so, you know, this only cost like eight bucks and it was easy to do. And I'll put a link in the description to a video where I show you how to pour a little slab like this. But that's that, that should reduce noise and vibration. And now we're gonna set the outdoor compressor on that slab. All right, so there's rubber pads that go under the feet. And hitting these with a little bit of WD-40. All right, I got it all attached with the rubber pads underneath. I drilled that out with a hammer drill and then I used tap cons to put it in. There's a bush behind here, a little, uh, I think it's like a peonies or something. Uh, I cut this back a little bit, but I'm still leaving it there. It says it needs 12 inches behind it. I left about 22 inches between the back of the unit and the building. So uh, I'm pretty happy with this. Okay guys, here's the indoor unit. I have it up on the bench. I'm just kind of taking a look at what the deal is. And I'm sort of figuring out how I want to do these videos. Uh, you'll notice I said videos. I'm going to break this thing up into several parts. So one, two, three, something like that. And then I'll also make a full video with all three or four of these together showing you the whole install. This is video one, and it's basically on the electric, okay? And as I said, I am not an electrician, and I'm just a homeowner doing an install here. So please follow your local building codes and hire an electrician if you need to. So, as far as this unit goes, there's an electrical wire that comes with the installation kit. Now, part of the reason I bought the Senville is it comes pretty much with everything you need except for the tools you'll need to install. My videos will give you all the tools listed for the install, like gauges, adapters, things like that, in the description down below. Now, this plate is used to hang the indoor unit on the wall. In here, you have your two line sets. One is a 3 8 inch, one's a quarter inch. They come with the ferrules on there. Now, you're gonna need, you know, most likely the flaring tool. So that's something I had to buy. So I'll put a link for that like in the description. So down here is your electrical wire. Okay, this runs between 
the outdoor compressor and the indoor unit you'll see it it has you know wire tabs and everything there's four wires that comes with the kit you also get a drain hose you get your tape um, I brought this out just so you can see this unit is uh, 15.5 sear which is pretty good and uh, the heating performance factor is 9.8 it's one of the most efficient heat pumps goes down to I think 5 degrees Fahrenheit which is really good it's 410A Freon and the unit comes pre-charged meaning it already has the Freon in it you just do need to vacuum the lines now this electrical wire, you'll see a plate here, okay, it'll be a hole. I removed a little plastic tab, which is here, pop that off, and I put a wire clamp on there, and that feeds through to the front. That took me some time to figure out, because the directions really don't tell you how to do it. So, that goes through there, and then I'll turn this unit around and show you the front. The unit also comes with the through wall adapter, protection sleeve, and uh, you know the line sets and all that. So let me flip this around and I'll just show you how the indoor unit is wired up. You can stand the uh, unit upright like that and you'll see you can open up this flap. Now this thing snaps so you got to you know you pull on it a little bit and these clips will pop open and in here is your electrical wire so just be real careful if you stand the unit up uh, this is probably the best way to do it because the bottom of the unit's round and it won't stand up so unless you have someone to hold it and in here there's this metal slash plastic cover now I took a uh, nipper and I cut that V out of there and that's just to protect the wires so that they're not being crushed okay I also snipped away some metal here and I filed that so that it's smooth so the wire runs through that hole through the wire clamp in the back and then it comes out here and they have the lugs labeled one two and three I went red to red white to yellow and black to black you just need to make sure when you wire it up that number one goes to one on the outdoor unit two and three and so on so that's how you wire it up and you can see how the wires kind of run through here like that and that's why I cut that little notch and this will get screwed on there like that there's a little set screw that goes in there and then they have a plastic plate that covers this up to make it look nice. And here's the filters that come with the unit. So you need to clean those out uh, once in a while too. And one other tip for you is the wiring diagram is on the inside of the unit. So uh, it's, it's here on the indoor unit and it's on the cover that you take off for the electrical on the outdoor unit. All right, guys, that pretty much wraps up video one. Video two is going to actually show you how to put the unit through the wall, how to bend the copper tubing properly, and uh, video three is going to show you how to vacuum out the system and charge the Freon. And then probably the last video, I'll show you the unit working and all my thoughts on everything in the install. Please think about subscribing. Uh, if you want to watch these videos, I will put them linked in the description along with all the tools and actually the unit that I'm installing. And they make a couple different BTU size units. I think they have a 9, a 12, an 18, and a 24. Thanks for watching, guys, and don't forget to hit the thumbs up. Hey guys, Double Wide 6, and I'm in the process of setting up this mini split, and I already made video 1, and that's pretty much on the electrical, and video 2 is what we're on right now, and what we're going to show you is how to hook up the indoor unit in the house, we're going to pass the lines through the wall, and uh, we're also going to set up the line set cover, and basically have everything done on the inside we're looking at the back of the unit here and they give you a mounting plate 
and what we're going to do is center this up right where we want it um, in case there's not studs exactly where we want it uh, what we're going to do is use these uh, spiral drywall connectors I think each of these are rated to hold about 100 pounds so uh, we'll get this secured up to the wall and keep moving on we're just taking a look at the lines um, the lines by factory come out the uh, right side of the unit when you're facing the front. So that's for the power and for the line sets and also the drain line. This unit allows you to run it either out the front right side or the front left. Now if you're going to run it out the front left, you're going to have to add your line sets on here and, and put a 90 degree bend to go out this way. You can also uh, move your drain line over to you pop this plug off and move this drain line over here uh, if you want to so um, I'm trying to figure out which way I, I want to drain it I got everything calculated and figured out, I believe. Now I'm just drilling a pilot hole through the wall. It's going to angle down just a little bit for the condensation drain. Now I'm going to drill through from the inside with a two and a half or a two and five eighths hole saw bit. This one's actually 64 millimeters. I'll put a link to that in the description for you. I'm going to drill from both sides. The next step here, I believe, is to turn these things like 90 degrees. So I'm just going to carefully turn these lines. And I pulled back the insulation just so I can watch what's happening as I try and bend them. So we'll put our insulation on this. And there's a couple of little plastic covers that I need to put on here as well. I'm just gonna keep these caps on here. And we'll just try and get everything nice and tight together. Looks like I forgot the electrical wire. I put the plastic cover on over here. This one where the wiring comes through and this one that holds back the line set.
All right, guys, I made my bends, and now what I want to do is loosen up these caps, and this should let out and release some nitrogen. And that nitrogen's in there from when they pressure test them at the factory. So if there's not nitrogen coming out, you may have an issue. Looks like it's just on the small line. So I'm pretty happy with the install so far. Um, I have the line coming down the wall and I use this uh, protective cover which looks real nice. Here I am, I'm just cutting away the drain line. Now the drain line came with the installation kit and uh, I taped it to the stub and fit that on nice behind that uh, decorative thing where it connects together. So uh, it turned out that the way I was going to hook up my line set, my line was going to be about seven or eight foot long. And the issue is the unit is pre-charged with Freon and there would be too much Freon for a seven foot line. The line set that comes with it is 16 foot. And I talked to the manufacturer and they said that you have to use a minimum of uh, 10 foot. So rather than making it 10 foot and flaring the ends it would still be uh, coiled up and you know if I could redo this I would probably put the compressor down about 8 foot and run the line along the house but what I've decided to do was to dig out some earth here about about 8 inches or so and I'm coiling up the uh, lines and uh, I put down landscape fabric down there in the bottom and that will allow water to drain out and up top I'm going to cover it kind of with like a wooden block box and then I'm going to put some rocks over it and landscape it. So uh, at least the line's the right length as far as the Freon and it's going to look neat when I'm done. By coiling up the line flat, it helps prevent oil from getting stuck. I notice a lot of people just coil it up vertically and it looks pretty hideous behind the unit. But by laying it down flat like this, I think the manufacturer called it serpentining, um, it should prevent oil from getting caught. And also, uh, I'm not putting earth or soil right against the lines, so we're going to use the air to actually insulate the lines. 
So I have this box, like I said, it's, it's sitting on top of the landscape fabric. And here I am, I'm just sort of pulling the lines through it and maneuvering it all into place. The idea is once I get everything set, it should be hidden and I should be able to access it if I need to down the road. So uh, now what I'm going to be doing is I'm putting on this accordion thing to kind of hide the lines and protect the lines a little better. Um, so I'll just slide this over the lines and get that in place. And then I'm going to landscape over this with uh, some of the matching rocks. The plywood I used is uh, waterproof plywood. I guess it's used for flooring and houses. And I put a piece of rubber over top of the plywood to help protect it and keep out water. Now any water that gets down in there should drain through. And I'm just carefully putting these rocks over this. And in the future if I need to get in there I'll just move the rocks out of the way and uh, I should have access. Well here's a look at the unit. So far, everything looks really good. I'll bring you in here. I'll show you how this wooden thing and the line is hidden. Um, I know it's there. If uh, anyone would try and dig, they'd see the line or they'd hit the plywood before they'd actually hit the copper. So uh, I'm pretty happy with what I have. And I really like this line set cover. Um, I got that from Amazon and I'll put the links down below. You guys need to stay tuned for video three where we're going to vacuum pump the system and get everything wrapped up. Thanks for watching guys. Hey guys, we're on part three here of installing our mini split. And in today's video, we're going to show you how to hook up your lines, both the electrical and the line set to the outdoor unit and then we're going to use the vacuum pump in our gauges and we're going to vacuum the lines and add the refrigerant so that's what this video should entail so we'll talk about the wiring on the outdoor unit the uh, lines coming down with our 240 come from the disconnect box they're going to run here where it says L1 and L2 and the communication cord that goes to the indoor unit red is on one blacks on two white is on three and that cord is grounded as well as the ground from the 240 volt circuit i'm not using this wire connector here because i added one to the box here and it's going to put too much pressure on these wires so we're going to put this plate on and that finishes up the electrical for the unit. Okay, we're at the point of the project where we need to connect our line set. I'm using this product called Nylog. Uh, basically what it does is it seals up these pipes and it stays fluid and doesn't get hard. And um, since I did not buy a micron gauge I want to make sure that all my fittings are right so here I am just putting on the nylog it goes on both sides of the flare the outside and the inside and the uh, brass fittings on the unit the line set wasn't really too hard to get into place um, I just took my time and lined things up. I found the copper pipes to adjust very easily. Um, in fact, I didn't even need to use my copper tube bender. These nuts or caps should be torqued. However, um, I don't have a, a crow's foot torque wrench. So uh, I just snugged them up so that they were pretty tight. I will do a vacuum test and uh, we'll we'll check if it drops at all that would tell us that we have leaks if you have leaks it's going to be leaking from your connections okay guys I got the vacuum pump it's all hooked up and uh, we're on the low port here 
and here's the way this is set up so the yellow hose on the manifold is tied into the vacuum and the low side is the blue that gauge is going to the uh, heat pump and air conditioner and the only thing that you'll need is an adapter these things are made 5 sixteenths of an inch rather than a quarter I'm not quite sure why they do that but you need an adapter so I have that adapter there and it's actually uh, a pioneer part so we have this thing vacuuming the air out if there's any issues you don't have to worry about losing refrigerant or anything because we didn't release the refrigerant into the system yet and if we look here at the low side meter, we're trying to get this thing down to negative 30 inches of mercury, and I'm already there. Uh, actually, the, the manual says negative 20, so uh, we're in real good shape. We're going to run this pump for 15 minutes, and uh, you just want to be sure that if you get a pump, you add oil to it, because they come without oil. All right, guys, we're going on 15 minutes, which is plenty of time because, like I said, we're, we're even past negative 30, which is real good. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to close off the low side. And we're going to turn off our vacuum pump. Now we're going to let this thing sit about 15 minutes or so. And we're going to just keep our eye on this gauge. And if that gauge goes down and it's losing vacuum, that's telling us that there's a leak. Alright guys, it's been about 20 minutes or so. And this thing did not budge at all. I'm really liking the uh, gauge set. Seems to work quite well. And if you do have a leak... You want to look where your connections are. So down here, you have two connections. And in my case, up here inside this uh, cover, I have two connections. And you can check for leaks just by taking some bubbly water and a brush. Put it on there. And uh, you should see bubbles uh, where it's leaking. So that's how you test for it. Uh, now what we got to do is uh, charge the system with the refrigerant. Alright guys, now we're going to release the refrigerant. You want to make sure there's no leaks whatsoever, otherwise you're going to need someone over here to charge the refrigerant. So we'll take off that service cap. And looks like it's a quarter inch. Nope. You should hear the uh, refrigerant be released. open this all the way up. There you go. And I'm going to use the Nylog again.
Now, a little Freon will come out of here, so we're just going to try and remove this pretty quick. And all my, my gauges are in the off position. Okay, here's a look at the indoor unit. Right now it's uh, running on full blast. I don't know if uh, you'll be able to hear it, but it uh, definitely puts out some real nice cool air and it's super quiet. 71 degrees is what I have it set to, so it'll just maintain that temperature. Everything on the unit's controlled by uh, remote control. Here's the remote control, and I just kind of put it by my doorway on the way out so I can turn it on or off. And uh, you just control it right there. It'll hold whatever temperature you want, um, air or heat. Here's a look at the outdoor unit running. It is super quiet, guys. very happy with the way things look and how quiet everything is. So if this is a job that you're going to try and do on your own, you're going to need some tools. Um, I bought this manifold set that worked out real well for me. And it came with uh, some five foot hoses. And like I said, it included the, uh, uh, the adapter here. So you don't necessarily need uh, to buy an adapter if you get this kit. Um, a pipe bender. I didn't even use this thing. But this thing does like 3 16 up to 3 8 inch pipe. And uh, you can bend that hollow tube copper without kinking it. A hole saw, two and a half inches is what uh, I used. I had this laying around, it worked real well. Um, so you may need that to drill through your wall. This is the vacuum pump I used. Uh, this one was, uh, I, I got a little bit bigger one. The cheapest one was a quarter horsepower. This one's one third. And it's really quiet, did a good job. And uh, another tool, is a flange maker okay or a flaring tool and uh, I was planning on cutting the lines and making the line shorter but uh, according to the company the lines need to be at least 10 foot so I would probably put my outdoor unit further away from the indoor unit if I were to redo the unit but those are you know the basic tools that you'll need and uh, you know cost wise I think I'm under $150 for all those but you can do the math so the total cost for my unit with all tools and everything somewhere around 12 1300 and uh, I think that's a real good price considering um, I called the local HVAC company and they were going to charge I believe the estimate was somewhere between 1900 and 2100 to install the electric and the entire unit. Um, as far as the unit goes, I would have to buy the unit that they work on. And they use more of the commercial, the more expensive units like the uh, Mitsubishi and Fujitsu and LG. Uh, so those units cost more money. and. Uh, you know, I was able to buy a, a cheaper unit and just put it in myself, uh, you know, really for about one third of the cost. Um, these units, you know, as far as being cheap, they're supposed to last anywhere from 10 to 15 years, which seems like a long time. They run on the uh, 410A refrigerant. So, uh, you know, it's the newer refrigerant, which is really efficient. And uh, electricity wise, these things run on inverter technology. So, from what I understand, they turn the AC power into DC, and it requires about, you know, half the amperage of a, a normal uh, heat pump or air conditioning unit. So, they're real efficient to run. And another cool thing about these units is uh, 
you can tie more than one head or indoor unit onto an outdoor uh, compressor. So you could have up to three of the uh, indoor units um, in different parts of your house. Uh, I'm really impressed with how cold it is. My garage is uh, about 600 square foot. Um, I have nine foot ceilings in here. I'm insulated very well including the uh, garage doors. I've recently put up a uh, two inch foam board because uh, last winter was just so cold out here. And um, you know, I, this 18,000 18, BTU um, really is, is more than enough. In fact, they recommended the 12,000 BTU, but I kind of oversized it. So uh, if you have any questions on these heat pumps or mini splits, you can put it down there in the comments. I'll be happy to answer. And uh, as I said, I'll, I'll link to all the tools that I use for this project in case you're interested in doing it yourself. So thanks for watching, guys, and hopefully you enjoyed the video series. Stay tuned. Ch uh, check back because I am going to make a follow-up video on how this unit's treating me. Thanks, guys.